this is Nancy Gaberti from Total Wellness Empowerment, and I am so excited to have Rob Call on with me today. He's an award-winning journalist, inventor, software architect, connector, and visionary. He's the author of The Bottom-Up Revolution, which I highly recommend you get a copy of, Mastering the Emerging World of Connectivity. He's given talks and workshops to Fortune 500 executives and national medical and psychological organizations. He's pioneered the first of their kind conferences in positive psychology, brain science, and story. He hosts some of the world's smartest, most interesting, and powerful people on his bottom-up radio show. Rob founded and he publishes one of the top Google-ranked progressive news and opinion sites, opednews.com, which has been seen over 23 million visitors. And I'm so excited to have him empower you with his brilliance today. So welcome. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you. So you want me to talk about the hero's journey? Yes. Okay. 100%. <laughs> so, and and I, I want to put it in the context of my book. The book is the, the bottom-up revolution, mastering the emerging world of connectivity. And the hero's journey is a myth. It's a myth that is told in a thousand different cultures. And it was originally described as the monomyth. And then Joseph Campbell wrote a book, The Hero with a Thousand Faces, which has been described as one of the 100 most influential books of the 20th century. And uh, it basically is an incredible description of, of, a, the, of the process of going through change. Now, what kind of change? It could be getting a new job, it could be going on an adventure, it could be finding out that you have cancer, it could be deciding you're gonna be a vegetarian. 99.9% uh, .9 of movies have a hero's journey story arc to it. And so you're used to seeing the hero's journey all the time and once you hear about it, you're never gonna see a movie the same way again. You're gonna see the hero's journey in it and the different stages of it. So I'm going to talk to you about it from the idea that you have hero's journeys in your life. Those are journeys where you go through change. Now, I believe that when you go through a hero's journey, you're really becoming born again as a new person. I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about how you are going through the process of becoming a new person. And I really believe that it's not an easy thing to do. I mean, when you watch a movie about the hero's journey, the, 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 the hero has some tough times. And, and it, it can be tough to go through those changes in your life. But if you understand the stages and the steps in the hero's journey, I believe it can make it a lot easier to understand where you are in the hero's journey and to even recognize that you have an opportunity to go on a hero's journey. Because a lot of people don't take the invitation or the call. Uh, most people go through many of the hero's journeys in their lives. And, and, and I believe that the hero's journey description provides us with, us with a kind of a map of the territory as we go through these life changes. And, and the most essential part of the journey of becoming a new person is bottom up. And the reason it's bottom up is, and, and I talked about bottom up in your last show. I, should I give a little description about what bottom up is? Yes. Okay, so bottom up is a way of seeing the world. It's the way that humans evolved to be. We evolved over literally millions of years uh, of being human and proto-human and humanoid, living in hunter-gatherer bands where people to survive had to think about each other, how to take care of each other, how to be constantly aware of how the other people in their band were and what they were doing. If they made a decision, they had to make that decision thinking about how it would affect everybody else in that hunter-gatherer band and how it would affect the nature around them that their lives depended on. 
So they couldn't just start a fire. They couldn't just wipe out all of a bush of berries because they had to live off of it the next season. And uh, the, what happened is civilization came along and it has repressed a lot of the aspects of what it is to be human, what it is to, to be bottom up, which means being compassionate, being cooperative and interdependent and aware of other people. Uh, and, and so my book, The Bottom Up Revolution, gets into describing in great detail what it, what it looks like to be bottom up, how we've, we're returning to bottom up because the internet and smartphones have catalyzed the return to bottom up. And now people born after 1980 have much more bottom up brains. Their brains are literally different than people born before 1980. So the hero's journey is a part of it. And what's bottom up about the hero's journey is that once you get into this change process, once you start on the journey, it's all about making connection with new people or redefining your relationships with people you've already known. It's all about finding and building new skills that you acquire. These are all bottom up ideas. These are all bottom up things. So if you're going to go through change in your life, it's all about reconnecting with the world, reconnecting with people, connecting with new people in new ways. So I'm going to go through the details of it. And just remember, the goal of my book is to teach people to see through more bottom up eyes and develop connection consciousness, because it's can, our connection to the world, to nature, to other people that defines who we are, that gives us the stories that we define ourselves by. I got into the hero's journey because I became fascinated with the world of story. I ended up organizing the first conference on story that brought together all the different worlds of story. There were conferences before that were on screenwriting or novel writing or marketing and i brought together all the worlds i brought together screenwriters and novelists and marketers and psychotherapists because really psychotherapy psychotherapy is helping people to understand the stories that they tell themselves about how they live their lives and then helping people to redefine those stories that's what psychotherapy is all about it's politics. I, I've worked as a consultant with poli political candidates up to the congressional level, helping them to identify the issues and the stories in their lives that help them to de define their issues and put them into stump speeches, which are often just five minutes long. You got to come up with a story and then wrap it around your issues that you're trying to you know, communicate. Uh, I, I, religion is all about story. And if, if you look at all the different worlds of story, it's huge. And the hero's journey is, is perhaps the most powerful story. And it's one that's used so much to connect people and, and to, to touch them because the hero's journey is, is so powerful. So let's get going and I'll talk to you about what the hero's journey is. Love it. So there are stages in the hero's journey. You know, the person starts out in an ordinary world, and then there's a call to adventure. Usually the person rejects the call. Then there are threshold guardians. There's a mentor. Then they have to cross a threshold. In other words, you get the call, and then you have to make a commitment, and you have to do something or stop doing what you've always done in order to start yourself on this journey. Uh, then you're going to go under. Usually when there's a story about the hero's journey, there's darkness or underwater. Be, uh, think about Moses in, 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 and uh, in the river. And basically that's because the hero's journey is about being reborn. And so you're in the womb. Once you cross the threshold, then you're on the road and you have to face ordeals and, and encounter antagonists and losses. Then you have a party uh, and, and you get some relief and you get a break and then you're developing, you're tapping new resources, you're, you're encountering more challenging ordeals as you're building your skills and your allies and your resources. You've got to redefine who you are and you do that by reintegration of your masculine and feminine selves. You have to go through an apotheosis, reevaluating and defining what your relationship is with God or the higher power in your life. Then you've got to face your worst battle, your worst struggle. And really, if, 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 if your hero's journey is about deciding you're going to get help for your headaches or deal with your cancer or uh, 
work out your problem of your being fired or whatever. Uh, it's about redefining who you are and deciding that you're going to, to continue on this journey and, and succeed. And the last part of the hero's journey is the road back. You've got to take back when you, when you're a hero, you are doing something. You've left your ordinary world to find some magical elixir to help rescue your world. And you're going to come back with that magic elixir metaphorically and then save the world and, and yourself or your family or, or whatever. Uh, and then you have to be able to straddle both worlds because some people get stuck in, in, the, in the heroic part of it. And, and we'll get into that as we go along. So that's, those are, that's the quick overview. I love it. So who goes on the hero's journey? People, couples, spouses, parents, siblings, families, customers, groups, organizations, communities, nations, the planet, cultures, religions, political parties. I got into, in, in writing my book, exploring how most movies have one superhero who's the hero. And I really think that a lot of times in real life, and, and we should do it more in movies, the hero was the community. The hero was a group of people who all get together and change the world. And I, I, so Oz, the Great and Powerful, is one movie that does that. And I think we need to have more movies like that. I'd like to see people like James Cameron and Shonda Rhimes, who are you know great writers in touching so many lives, write stories where the, it's a community or a whole bunch of people together who change the world and, and save, save everybody. Before the journey begins, you start in your ordinary world, the existing culture and system. You're feeling just cool and safe, just everything's fine until it's not. And then you get a call. And there are all kinds of calls. And this is a long list. And uh, it, there are just a lot of different ways that you can get a call. It could be that you need money, you, need, you want love, you, you have a new friend, you need to escape danger or boredom or pain or illness or depression or poverty or a bad relationship or uh, you're getting, getting divorced, you're getting married, you're going into a relationship with somebody new. And, and those are all risky things that can change your life. There are so many ways that you can get the call. And there's a wonderful book called Callings. Uh, it's by Greg Lavoie, a wonderful book that it's the whole book on how to recognize the call, how to, how to fine tune your awareness so you recognize that you're getting a call to adventure that with an opportunity to become reborn as a new, better, stronger person. So there are all kinds of calls. Now, I like to use Star Wars as an example of the hero's journey because George Lucas worked with Joseph Campbell. They worked face to face, coordinated with each other to make Star Wars a, a, a classic hero's journey story. So, but they're all kinds. I mean, here, here's a picture uh, of uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi telling Luke Skywalker, come with me and let's rescue Princess Leia and I'll teach you the force. And, uh, but there's also an example of somebody getting, uh, being told that they've got a diagnosis or somebody getting a job offer or buying a house or selling a house. Those are all potential hero's journeys that can change your life. Now, most people reject the call when they get it. So the call is really what invites you or forces you or precipitates you to, to make start in the process of change. But a lot of people, maybe most people, if they even notice the call, because a lot of times people don't even notice it, you know, and in the previous interview I did with you, I talked about recognizing opportunities for positive experiences. People just don't notice opportunities for positive experiences and they don't recognize opportunities to go on a heroic journey, to go through a life changing experience and become reborn as a new person. And so a lot of people reject the call. In Star Wars, Luke Skywalker says to Obi-Wan Kenobi, listen, I can't get involved. I've got work to do. It's not that I like the Empire. I hate it, but there's nothing I can do about it right now. It's all such a long way from here. And he just says, sorry, Obi-Wan, but I can't help. And then the next day, he goes back and his aunt and uncle have been killed by Darth Vader. 
and so sometimes the call comes back harder and then you then you respond uh, but the the call can come in so many different ways and a lot of the times you resist it because you're you're comfortable with the status quo you're comfortable with the way things are and if you reject the call it's allowing your possible self and the possible world that you will be entering to die you'll stay the way you were and you know you have all these possibilities in your life you have all these things that you can do that you've never done before and if you're going to do them you need to embrace the call and take the steps and have the courage to do that so you really have to be awake and mindful like you mentioned before about waking people up too well part of the hero's journey is waking up is, is becoming awake and aware in new ways and so sometimes it, it it takes a call something to nudge you to get started and and you don't always do it alone there are mentors who will help you to cross the threshold to accept the call when you accept the call you cross the threshold and that basically means you make a decision you decide you commit that you're going to do this. And those mentors can be a book, a community, nature, a teacher, a minister, a politician, a therapist, a coach, a boss, a friend, an enemy, a song, a stranger, movies, all kinds of things that can do it. It can be if you know it it can be as simple as talking to somebody who's trying to sell you something. It can mm -hmm. be a website or a listserv group or or uh, some kind of discussion group or it could be a, an inspiring quote. Any of those things can trigger you to do it or to, to embrace it because you, you may get the call and go, nah, I don't have the time. And so here you want to cross the threshold and there are all kinds of thresholds. There are boundaries and, and there is class, rules, taboos, others' expectations, authority, your self-image, your there are customs. Uh, there are people telling you you can't do it. There, there are prices. Uh, there, you know, a lot of, a lot of the, 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 there are threshold guardians. Threshold guardians like uh, are there to tell you you can't do it, or to scare you away. If you go to a, a, a Buddhist temple, a lot of them have lions at the door to scare away people. But it's really once you know that you can trust yourself they don't do that anymore but a lot of times threshold guardians are your family it's your friends it's it's your it's your your parents saying you can't do that or your spouse going what are you thinking and you have to work through that and often you do that by finding a mentor. So you just worry about yourself going through the process. You don't have to worry about convincing them. Well, maybe you do, or maybe, maybe you bring them with you. I mean, part of the, the hero's journey can be bringing along the people that you care about, but it, you have to, but you have to recognize that very often, if you, you're going to go on a hero's journey, it may not be with the full support of the people you're currently closest to. Part of the hero's journey is redefining who your relationships are with. And, you know, hopefully you're going to be able with the people you love to bring them along with you or at least give, get them to respect your decision. But it often changes things. I mean, there are lots of people in relationships where their illness is part of the relationship and it's scary to the person they're in the relationship with to change because that may change their relationship. Exactly. So once you cross the threshold, you, the very often the imagery is going underground or underwater or in the dark, just like you're entering the womb. And it's something that uh, is a symbol of being reborn. But once you cross, then you, have, you end up on the road of tests and trials where you build new alliances, strengths, tools, and resources. And you get new allies. And in The Wizard of Oz, it's, it's the, the Cowardly Lion and the Straw Man and the Tin Man. In, in Forrest Gump, it's Lieutenant Dan and Bubba. Uh, if you're, uh, uh, 
going into business. It could be websites. So what you need to do is learn how to look for those and find them and build them. Then an important part of the hero's journey is redefining who you are. You're being reborn. You're a new person. And so Campbell describes meeting with the goddess, which is looking at your feminine, and that's even for a guy, that's even like the feminine, archetypal feminine, mm -hmm. looking at your masculine nature, at, at, at one mint or atonement with the father, which is about individuation. And then it's revisiting your connection with God or the higher power in your life on how you deal with authority. I mean, think about how many heroes in movies have a di very different relationship with authority. So these are all important parts of, of what you're going through. Everybody's different. Every journey is different. And yet the, the important thing is to recognize that these are all parts of it. When you're on a journey, you're going you're gonna to fall down. It's like you're, 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 you, you're reborn and you're like a little baby in some ways. And so you're going to fall. You're going to make mistakes. And then you're going to get up and you're going to find that there are people there to, there to help you get up. And it's important that you recognize that those people are a, an essential part of your journey and you need to embrace them because you may not be accustomed to doing that. You have to be open to having new allies, new friends, resources. You have to develop new skills. And if you recognize that you're on one of these journeys, then, and you start looking for these stages, it can make it a lot easier for you to cope with it. And I can't emphasize how important it is that you find the people these journeys are about people. These journeys are about communities. They're about organizations where you build new connections. Connection is what becoming a new person is all about. You don't do it alone. You know, they talk about how individuality. And I really believe that the way people become successful, the way they become happy, is by connecting with other people, connecting with communities. Uh, I just did an interview with Rupert Sheldrake about spirituality and how it's scientifically supported. And so much of what he described is, 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 is about that connection, connection to the past, connection to other people. You need to do that. And if you understand that, then it'll make it a lot easier for you. I love that. Then there's the road back. You've won most of your battles. You've won the big final battle. And the big final battle is a scary one. And it feels, it may feel like you're going to die. If you think about movies, that happens all the time. And then suddenly you, 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 you survive, you recover, and things start looking easier and better. And you return with whatever the wisdom it is, whatever the new experience, the new skills are that bring you back to your life so you can be a better person, so you can help other people better, so you can make the world better. Some people on the journey become transfixed with the road, the glamour, the power, and they don't go home. Uh, but it's important to do that. It's important to, to not throw away what you had before. It's just you're gonna have, you may have a different relationship with those people and that's okay. And that is what the hero's journey is all about. Now, when you watch a movie, you're going to see that you've got some average person who's in an ordinary world and then something magical happens, something special happens. And then all of a sudden they've got to deal with it. And they're usually going to go, nah, I don't have the time. And then something else is going to come along and hit them harder. And they're going to go, I got to do this. And then they start. And then it, it, it can be very fast. It can feel really crazy. It can be very scary, but at least if you understand that this is what the process is, then you can go through it and you can embrace it and you can love it and know that it's going to come out at the end where you're going to be a stronger, happier, better person who can contribute more to the world. What happens if a person's on their hero's journey and they get stuck? Do they have to, do they if they realize that they're stuck, do they just look 
for different people to help them? I think that the, the, the handles that you have that you can grab onto are people. To find new mentors, new allies, new friends, join a group. Uh, if if you've got cancer, maybe join a support group. If if you're there are even there are all kinds of support groups out there and on Meetup now. Meetup is has millions of different groups for every possible interest, and you can literally go to Meetup and find something. Go to Facebook and and search for a category, and there are literally millions of of groups on Facebook for different areas of interest. Same thing with LinkedIn. Go to Twitter and type in. Uh, hashtags and you'll find different things as well but i think facebook and linkedin are better when it comes to finding other people to to connect with and try to connect face to face if you can be careful i mean you know if you're going online there are risks that you're taking but if you're in the process of going through the changes of a hero's journey the best thing you can do is find mentors and allies and people who can help you do we all go through the hero's journey? I think we all have opportunities to. Mm -hmm. Some people don't ever accept the call. Wow. And so they let all their potential future opportunities, all their, their new selves where they have the potential to be a better person, a stronger person, a happier person, they let them die. And so it takes some courage. It takes courage to cross the threshold. And I think that there are ways to do it. I think, you know, I, I, in, in the, the first interview I did with you, I talked about the anatomy of positive experiences. And I believe that positive experiences are the building blocks that give us the strength to face the challenges that we face. Having and creating more and better, deeper and stronger positive experiences are the, is the way that we have the courage to accept the call and cross the threshold. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And accepting the call is getting out of one's comfort zone, but also being aware of that opportunity. On the flip side of that, it would be so sad and uncharted, unreally fulfilled and unlived life if you pass up on these amazing opportunities. And sometimes I would say that opportunity or the call may look really bad. <laughs> <laughs> like you don't want it and the diagnosis came or you know you're in a bad toxic situation but you don't have to stay there and you don't have to feel defeated you can rise higher and be victorious if you go on the journey once you're in a toxic situation you're you're getting a pretty hard hitting call and it, it, it's when you finally open your eyes and wake up and go, I can change this. I can leave this and become some, someone else that you actually have the awareness to that there is a call and that you can accept it. it it's ended up that the thing that I sign most of my books with is when I say, may this further open up your bottom up eyes. And I love the concept of seeing with new eyes. That's a way of having awareness, really. So I'm thinking I've, I've been outlining a book about seeing with new eyes. So maybe that. I love that. That's an amazing title, too. Seeing with the, the different set of eyes and awareness and what people accept and how people want to live. We all have so much um, great information of how not only can we live more positively and happy and smile, but the real foundations that can improve our lives. And I, I go into them in more detail in the book, The Bottom Up Revolution. Uh, it, there's a whole chapter about the hero's journey and story and metaphor because I, I really believe that stories are how we define who we are and our relationship with everything in our lives. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.